All right. Um, so uh, I know, and and I know Christian, and um, I was just going to touch base with everybody. I was getting Christian, Vadim, and Charo queued up to record a um, a talk for the OpenShift Commons gathering. And from what I can tell from the Slack, um, it didn't happen this morning, but you got to reschedule a date with Intrado tomorrow. Um, do that. And I saw the slide deck came through, and um, the you know we're going to do whatever demos you want to do, but also incorporate a demo of um, deploying deploying or using the CR the code ready container. Um, and that was that'll be part of the OpenShift Commons gathering, which is going to be on November seventeenth, the first day of KubeCon North America. Um, and Stay tuned, today is my day to update the schedule for that event, so I will add all the speakers to that and shoot a link to that out as well. Um, I wanted to tell Joseph that I finally uploaded the past three OKD working group videos to the playlist. Yeah. So Thank um, you. I think I'm missing two others prior to that. So I will just keep going back in time until I catch up to myself, and I apologize for that. Um, and Christian, since you're here, um, I don't know how long you have. Do you want to give a quick update on um, anything that's going on with um, OKD and engineering point of view? I don't see him uh, in the list. He disappeared. Okay, he didn't come. All right. He was here he for like he a second. This is what happens, you know? Yep. He, was, he has said that he's having a horrendous meeting clash day. So yeah. And Vadim's having internet issues, so it's not a good day out there in the internets today. I'm just going to say this. I'm going to go back to... No, it's not. I mean, today my camera broke and my computer decided that all of its USB stuff would break, and I spent the last half hour trying to fix it. So, yeah, today's been a bad internet day. All right, so um, while I'm still yabbering on and before we um, jump into some other things, um, I have one more um, challenge, hopefully, um, to share with you guys that I would like us to, um, and I talked to the folks who are running this. Um, I hope all of you realize that the OpenShift console can be customized. Um, if not, talk to me, and um, <laughs> I will put a link to this whole slide deck here. I think it's... Um, here, if not yet, um, I'll put that in the chat. Uh, stop sharing for a second. And I just wanted to see if I could get a few of the OKD working group I asked, and it's okay if you do enter this contest. Um, the link is in this um, presentation. Um, and boy. So um, there's, it's a short on-ramp, um, so by the end of the month. But there's a competition to show the best OpenShift web console <clears throat> customizations using OpenShift 4 mechanisms. And Ooh. the most I've ever done to the console is change a logo. So um, I am not going to enter this contest, but I'm going to throw down a challenge to see if we can get a little more visibility of OKD by having someone who is deploying OKD out there to share whatever as part of this. And, um, you know, you will win a cool OpenShift hoodie, which someone else will have to figure out how to drop ship to your house. Not <laughs> um, but if you if you're interested, I have failed at that, as we all know. However, um, we are getting them. We are getting some swag for Commons and OKD um, put into the cool cool stuff store at Open at Red Hat, which means hopefully by Christmas. I can send you all a present. So, Yay! Um, for for OKD four, but um, that, that is a process, and it is not. I obviously I'm not in marketing, so um, I don't know it. But this is this deck that I dropped in here. Um, you sh if someone could check and make sure you can see it. If not, I'll make a PDF version of it um, available. It just walks you through all of the new features and what's coming down, and it's really cool. And um, you know, lots of good stuff around um, the console and getting started. So um, 
if you're, I don't know, at Dado, Neil, if you're using any of this stuff um, to make it look wonderful, or at BCIT, um, Bruce, if you guys have students who want to make a cool something. Well, we hadn't this, this thought about branding the OpenShift yeah. deployment, but now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> so there's... The, oh, so you, you two can figure out how to change the logo. Although that was all I figured out when I was doing it. So um, you know, I, I always had my own own logo for it. So I knew I was in my version of it. That was that was my my signal. So um, so there, I've I've done my duty. I've promoted the contest, and um, <laughs> that was that was that. So the, the other thing I was going to say is, and I, I didn't find out the date and time of it yet. Um, but there is um a birds of a feather hour long slot that we've been allocated by the powers that be at KubeCon for OKD working group. So um, as soon as I do that, um, I will, um, and if you win the console project, maybe um, we'll, we'll, we'll demo that too. But there's, it's an opportunity to do an introduction, probably repeat the sl same slides that we're gonna use in the gathering um, and do outreach to the Kubernetes community uh, at that event. So um, that's that's a really big deal. So we'll, as we get closer to it, we'll um, figure out how to structure that day and, and you know showcase all of you guys to our best abilities. Done that. Okay. Um, so I don't know if there's any feedback yet. I. Um, on uh, the code ready container if anyone's used that and downloaded it and tried it out yeah um, for i tried it on i tried it on windows but i did not succeed uh it was for some uh, reason it blocked and on okd on the uh, issues page some other guy uh, has also um reported the same on hyper v i don't know what the problem was i i did not investigate um that much into it and of course, that's the one platform I don't have a, the ability to test on. <laughs> yeah, what, I, I will say. Is the Hyper-V the one that's the problem? Mm, I think so. I can see that uh, the VM is uh, booting. I see some uh, locks, um, also see audit locks, but uh, that's all. I, I see the exact same behavior on a Windows 10 Hyper-V deployment as well. Huh. Does it does it support a uh, virtual box as a hypervisor? No. CRC doesn't know. CRC. Oh, that's a shame. Well, it uses it uses lib machine, I think. So I don't know. There might be a there might be a, a way to get it to, but it's meant to use the Hyper-V hypervisor. Lib machine used to support virtual box, but I think they ripped it out because of bugs and annoyances with it. Um, because I know that um. The Docker on Mac used to use VirtualBox, and that was powered by LibMachine. Yeah, and they switched out to Hyperkit, I think. Yep. Did, did you say there yeah, was traded a... traded on the Mac, no problem. What? Did somebody oh, say something? sorry. That, was there a... Somebody referred to an issue being, being open about that. Could you drop a link to that in the chat? Ah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at the lib machine code or the Docker machine repo, which is where the lib machine code lives. Uh, VirtualBox is still there, but it, yeah. So the VirtualBox driver is still there as well as the VMware ones, the Google ones, the Hyper-V ones, all the other ones. They're all still okay. there. Okay. Well, I think the CRC code would have to be modified to use it because it's, it's yeah. like a, a yeah. stretch thing, but yeah. Yeah, no, because you have to change your code that pulls in libmachine to use it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, my, my guess is um, from looking, I, I mean, I, I don't know enough to be able to give too much of a guess, but it just looks like the, the VM starts and whatever the communication needs to happen between the external process and the VM just never quite happens. Like it literally just gets stuck on um, creating code ready, the code ready container VM. It creates the VM, the VM starts, and then nothing happens. I even tried leaving it overnight. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be very useful, would it? <laughs> do, do you know, are, are folks having the same issue with the um, the Red Hat code-ready containers? 
Oh, I don't have a license, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out what the licensing is for Red Hat Code Ready containers and have not gotten an answer for that, so I haven't touched it. Yeah, it's a little, I, I think it's a little an annoying. You, if you set up a Red Hat developer account, you can use Code Ready containers for free, um, you, you just, but you have to create a pull secret from your um, your Red Hat developer account. So the I problem I observed. I, I kept getting access denied whenever I tried touching anything, which was like, oh, no, you need an active subscription to do this. And I was like, yeah, I'm okay. for me, it wound up generating OpenShift eval uh, subscriptions, which is not what I wanted. Yeah, because so, like 60 days. Yeah, so I I reached out to my Red Hat account person to ask, like, what the what's the deal here? Because this is directly opposing what DRC is uh, documented to do and what Code Ready Containers on Red Hat developers says it's supposed to be done. Um, and it, it, it basically blocks people from actually using it. So I haven't tried the Red Hat CRC because I can't run it because uh, it it keeps creating eval, cert, eval subscriptions, and I can't do that. Okay, I found there's a, there's a ticket somebody opened. Sounds like CRC stops working after CRC start on Hyper-V. So is that for the... Um... The Red Hat CRC, um, yeah, OpenShift one, or just for for the OKD one? No, that's that that looks like everybody. The... Yeah, that was opened in July at the end of July before we everybody. had before we had ours. Okay. Yeah, so maybe yeah, this I, is... I don't see anybody from that team, even though I entered the. Is it working for folks on um, Linux and Mac OS? Last time I tried, it, it worked fine. Mac. It worked fine for me on Fedora 32. So I haven't tried on 33 yet. I'm actually honestly a little scared because uh, the changes to how DNS works by default um, make it so that I'm a little unsure whether the, the libvirt DNS things, hacks that CRC uses will work. I haven't tried yet, and I that's that's on my uh, to do list. But it worked in thirty two. And Bruce, you said you were using it on Mac OS. Yeah, I, I installed it uh, using, uh, I, I guess, on top of the Docker uh, driver, and it worked fine. Cool. Uh, although I, I don't have, I've only got uh, thirty two gig of RAM, so you know all, all these things that eat RAM. Uh, it gets a little bit slow, so I'm not currently using it. That's sad to say. You've only got 32 gig of RAM. <laughs> I mean, that like I only yeah. have tw I only have 16 or 24 on my different machines. It's it's a, a real struggle to run uh, run CRC. Uh, it, it's kind of bad because like that's directly opposing the guidance, which says, ah, you can run this with eight gigs of RAM." No, you can't. <laughs> 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 it doesn't even start with its so, default so setup at eight um, RAM. So it... Well, I think the docs claim it takes so nine gigs like, of RAM. Um, um... Oh, really? Okay. I mean, That's Minikube is small, but I, I don't even use that really. Um... Go ahead, Diane. So, um. So that sounds like something maybe, um, yeah, it's okay. Um, I, my internet is a little wonky, so you'll see my face pi pixelate, or I'm seeing your faces pixelate every once in a while. So um, that's that's just me, and um, the wind is blowing outside my window. Um, so that sounds like it's not on the uh, CRC for OKD. That sounds like it's a CRC deeper issue. So maybe we can talk to Praveen about whether anyone's looking at it, um, is he the, or Gerard, or one of the, the team members, which brings me to the other topic that we had for today. And um, I was going to try and book meetings for everybody, but um, holidays inter intervened. But we are gonna try and get um, code ready into for OKD into the build process, um, the, the, the CICD build projects that, that's getting on so that Charo isn't um, building them by hand. And so that's our next um, ask. 
and I don't know, Charo, if you've had any more conversations with them. I think it was on me to set up a, a meeting with everybody, and I have not done that because my schedule didn't permit it. So um, I'm, I think I'm the roadblock on that. Is that correct, Charo? Yes, it is. <laughs> I, I, I have had a um, some more uh, yeah. chat conversations with um, – with the code ready team so so i've gotten introduced to several people that actually one of them reached out to me um when they stumbled across my repo so so we got the conversation going there um the other thing we need to we need to figure out which is an internal red hat thing is branding for our um code ready containers yeah. because co code ready is a is a trademark um kind of like jboss or OpenShift. um so we'll have to come up with something to call it we can say it's it's based on code ready containers you know like we say okd powers openshift oh my god are we gonna have to come up with a name for this yeah. now oh, i was thinking let's create a poll diane oh, diane no. has one. Oh yeah I, I i think i think we just flip it uh flip it and call it ready to code yeah, uh, the I'm good with that. I'm ready, good with that. Ready to code. <laughs> We're done. We're ready done. Creative. Nice. Okay. Got if it. Done, if, if you're good with that, but I'm I'm also gonna I'm gonna push back and say that um, this is branding that they we should get permission to use code ready. So yeah. uh, I will have a conversation with the powers that be because I think that especially if it's in the build process and it's you know it's part and parcel of it and we. You know, I know internally at Red Hat, I'm having conversations with the developer evangelist team that wants to use more of this stuff um, in their in their evangelizing and getting onboarding people. So if it's called something different, that's going to not make them happy. So um, I'm going to see if I can get a little um, internal leeway um, to, to use it. So uh, that was part of my hesitating on book, booking all those meetings. I wanted to have that conversation with the PMs first. So um, I'll work on that. But if you guys are okay with ready to code, um, I, I think that's fine with me too. If we end up getting pushback, um, so that was it. So I'm wondering the other piece of work that usually I ask um, uh, Christian to talk about is where we're at with um, getting the operators um, for OKD um, aligned. And I don't know, Charo, if you have any update on that at all from Christian or, and Vadim. Uh, I, I don't. I'm hearing silence. Um, so. I, I, I have seen some. I think so. I have seen some chatter um, around progress being made, but not enough to give a real update. But maybe it helps to know that yeah. people outside of this circle are thinking about it now. Christian wrote something about that. There are lots of internal talks about the operators, how to handle them, how to get them on the, in the community catalogs. And I would be interested in uh, which which kind of these talks are. Are we allowed to do that? Um, uh, how does it uh, get into CI? It would be very interesting to to get a feeling about what the uh, their direction is that is discussed. Is it completely clear yeah. that they get published or is, not? I'll see or... if I can get one. Yeah, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Christian and Vadim, I'll talk to them today in Slack or anything, to get a, put a little update on the, the working group list um, and see if we can get that. But the goal would be to have it just be part of the, um, the build process for OpenShift to also push, uh, push them out to a catalog for, for our use. Um, rather than having to rebuild them, um, so that was that was kind of my goal. Um, and so yeah, I'll, and I'll see if I can get them to do an update. I apologize because I think it was a very last minute thing that that Vadim and OK um, Christian couldn't come. Yeah, and they and they have to coordinate. You, you know, it, so, it's the same effort that we're doing right now with code ready containers um, multiplied by the number of operators because every operator. Um, has its own team, its own CI setup. In, in fact, there's not even, unfortunately, a standard pattern for how these operators are assembled and built, right? So some of them might be built 
with helm at their core. Some of them are built with a container registry written in Go at their core, and, and others follow other patterns. So it's, it's probably going to be a bit of a slog. But I have a good news. Uh, we made a workshop, a three-week workshop, uh, with OKD and uh, three, I think, main operators, a serverless uh, service mesh and the OpenShift pipelines. We built the OpenShift pipelines on our own and also the serverless from the Git repos. We, we did not uh, simply mirror Red Hat uh, images. And, uh, yeah, the first days worked uh, rather smooth. Um, the problem was not that the operators did not work, but that the examples uh, from the trainer did not exactly match the version. But this uh, is uh, no big thing. Um, it even worked in an offline environment. So in uh, in theory, uh, it looks very, very great. Um, the problem uh, is uh, that we build it on our own from source. and. Um, my boss does not like that idea to to publish that in the company. Um, despite of that, we have um, we have uh, launched the OKD4 cluster for our company um, today, and now all our people are yeah can work with that. It's it's rather stable, and it's uh, working in an air gapped environment and so on. And I would love to have this. OpenShift pipelines operate in the catalogs that we only have to click uh, on the button. But I think we are not far away from that, as, as uh, far as I understand. Yeah. Hey, hey and um, actually the screen that Diane's got up now, that's some homework that I, I still need to complete around the um, pattern for the recipes. Pro probably get that done toward the end of this week. Um, but with that said, um, Joseph, yeah. I, I've actually got now some working examples of doing a disconnected install um, with community images um, for the operators for Rookseph, Open Data Hub, which you see on the screen there, um, pipelines with, oh. uh, with, with all of the cluster tasks uh, and um, um, serverless, Knative. Uh, this was actually a, a project, an internal Red Hat project that I stumbled into because um, some folks reached out needing some help with some stuff. Uh, turned out it's a client that is in a very, very highly disconnected in, uh, environment due to the nature of their business. And they they wanted to do a machine learning workshop, which needs all of those components I just referenced. So as I finish writing up how I made it work in their completely disconnected environment, um, I'll be using those as the pattern for our uh, OpenShift recipes, our OKD recipes. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. And, and we'll yeah. write it. I'm going to. That sounds amazing, Charo. Yeah. Sorry, Diane. So hopefully we, we can um, start using this. That, that's okay. Um, I just just wanted to remember, remind, not remind you. This wasn't about prompt you to get that other one done <clears throat> but I just wanted to say that we we do have a space for this and what we're going what I'm going to work with um, Charo on too probably this week and we'll push a note out to the OKD working group on how if you have another recipe how to add it to this um, right now each one of these and, and my internet access is really a little slow here this one they go to a readme file um, with the instructions here so it's not it's not a, it's not perfect, but it is a way to do that and to filter it and everything is in GitHub. GitHub.com slash OpenShift OKD. And you just have to make a pull request and we'll put the instructions in, in the OKD um, workspace. And it is very, very slow here. Um, so um, I apologize, you probably aren't even seeing this. Um, yeah, my internets are, are are slowing down. Yep, you're not seeing this. Um, anyways, they'll be it'll be in yes, thank you. There we go. Um, it'll it'll be documented and we'll push out how to if you have another recipe to add how to put it in there um, as well. And eventually we'll get the we'll make the site a little bit more beautiful than just linking out to people's individual ones. The question that I think Charo and I had still was, um, 
if we if we should be linking out to say Charo's GitHub repo, or if we should be making a repo inside somewhere in the OKD.io um, repo or in another repo um, under OpenShift um, to put all of these. But um, those are the three I ones that Charo has so far, but I'm guessing that each of you have others. Yeah, I'd actually I'd it seems like a good idea to put there. it under the same location. Yeah. Otherwise, um, people who want to bounce between them will go like they've got to go to this website for one. Maybe there's something though helpful in another recipe that they want to reference. Um, Absolutely. May maybe we should consider. Um, I I don't know if this has been thought about, but like maybe we should have an organization for OpenShift community stuff to be collected into one place because stuffing it all into the OpenShift GitHub org is making it really hard to find stuff. It's getting too big as an organization. And maybe yeah. just having like an OpenShift community GitHub org, put all that in, will make it a lot easier and a much more discoverable. Yeah, I was actually, I was yeah. kicking around the idea of something like the Red Hat Communities of Practice. There's an organization, Red Hat-COP. We could yep. have OKD Communities of Practice if we could create an organization, OKD-COP. That sounds good. We we could we could actually put yeah. the recipes there and and I think that would probably encourage more community participation too because it it would be less of a barrier to somebody to to submit a pull request to an organization than to you know my personal GitHub account. Yeah, no, I don't I don't want them all going into Charo's group. I was just the the other other thing is to use the OKD.io uh, GitHub repo, but that's really just for the land landing page um, itself. So, um, yeah, thanks, El Michael. We'll, we'll see you later. Um, so, um, so I, that's I think I, the communities of practice one sounds like a, a good idea as long as it's open and public and anyone external can can create that um, can access and make a pull request. So, um, but for now, what I would say is if you have one that you want me to add into the current page. Um, you know, for, you know, maybe for any of the deployments that we did um, in the OKD marathon or anything along that nature um, or something else, just um, let me know. Um, and um, I will, um, and with, with some probably coaching from Charo, um, link to it and we'll get it, get it up and going because I would love to have, um, a um, you know, a few more um, in there and to be able to reference that in the um, in the OKD working group um, presentations and at the birds of a feather in November um, and encourage people to do that. So we've got to figure out, um, I think the baby step is to link to wherever they live, if they're in your personal repos or in a Dato repo or in a, a Rody and Schwartz repo or wherever um, that's public um, and then figure out a home for them all. Well, I don't have anything public specifically for Datto, but like I could probably look at some of the stuff that we've had so far and, and, and start talking about like if there's somewhere to put it, maybe putting it there and, and having it public for people to, to see and contribute to. It's just there hasn't been a reason for us to do that so far because there's really nowhere to put it and nowhere to advertise. Well, um, yeah, and so I'm just wondering, I mean, like I'm thinking, and maybe I'm off the, and correct me, please, the digital ocean thing that um, uh, Dusty, Mabe did, and you did um, for the OKD Working Group Marathon, is is that something that we could recipeize um, and have available and link to uh, and add in here? Is we could ask Dusty to see if it could be recipeized, because if it could, that would be actually really awesome, um, at least internally at work. Um, yeah. We have a semi ansibilized attempt at doing UPI installation on plain KVM. Uh, it is kind of working, um, mm -hmm. uh, but we also have like, we've done another recipe where we did UPI on OpenStack because our OpenStack's ridiculously old. Um, and so the IPI doesn't work. Um, so there's, there's a couple of things like that that we've got floating around that we could possibly clean up and, and actually share. Um, I, I'll need to talk to my colleagues about it and see what we can do. But like so far, the only reason I haven't really thought about it seriously is that we don't have anywhere to put it. 
Well, Jamie, is um, is there a readme file? I'm looking at your GitHub. I'm, I'm trying very slowly to get to your repub, re, GitHub repo, but for that, um, the OKD OpenShift UPI script, is there a decent readme file or is it just the code? Because I think the one key here is um, what I'd like to do is um, point to a decent readme file. Um, that that's the only qualifying thing that explains nice how to um, a little bit. And yeah. I think that's one prerequisite I would ask for is that what I'd like to link to is not the actual repo, but to the readme file. And um, I see your readme file there is just very short. Um, so if you could look at maybe what Charo's got for examples in the Rook Ceph disconnected or the Tecton one and just a little bit more verbosity there. Absolutely. Um, that would that would be helpful because I my I, I worked on uh, years ago um, at at Active State the Python cookbooks and what they did was they grabbed like a little snippet of code or something it was a little bit more visual than what I have on the OKDIO site right now um, and I'm just thinking that maybe my next step is to figure out how to um, show the README file for each of these things or a snippet of the README file. And some of that is what you're describing is also similar to the stuff the that was written um, back for the the installation recipes from last year, actually, or earlier this year. A lot of those were mostly text with snippets of code and example and stuff like that. So similar. Yeah, but I think that's a good habit um, or a, a best practice is just to give them a little bit. Um, and and Joseph, I'm looking at what you just clicked in there and again, OKD IO. Is that, is I that understand. Your... I understood that we uh, that the idea is that we should have should create an organization in GitHub where we can put all repositories, all oh. forks and recipes in or we we, we will. Yeah. We can start at it. Um, it's easy. Uh, I think we yeah, we have to I mean come something up with something. Um, I'm not thrilled that the OK. Yeah. yeah well, I think OKD community, like that's Zen. cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Sorry. Yeah, I think it's more like that. And then maybe we could even move the OKD.io site. Anybody opposed to me creating that organization now? Go for it. I mean, I was going to create it until you just said that question. <laughs> I think, I think um, uh, go ahead and create it, Charo. Let's run it by Christian and Vadim too, because um, I just don't want to offend the powers that be, because we do have some community stuff in the OpenShift one, so there might be a sub directory under OpenShift slash community. And yeah, th this would be a lot I'd less like annoying if like GitHub to, supported um, subgroups. Yeah. Circuit yeah, that's the problem. It yeah. doesn't support subgroups, so. Switch to GitLab. I joke, I joke. <laughs> well, I mean, we could. No, I don't that, joke that's, about that. that I that's I that's not the most that, unreasonable yeah. ask in the world. Well, I'm biased. Yeah, I, I use the, I the, GitLab the, the question I, I mean, so do I, is, I, but. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so names. So I think we have to. Uh, um, be a, tread a little carefully on this one because I, I yeah, I, part of me wants to take what's open right now the OKD landing page. I want to move it into wherever this is too, so that it's not separate out there in OpenShift dash CS, which is you know community sites um, or something like that. Yeah. But I don't know the I don't know the answer there, and I think there are, there is some there's a little bit of politics internally about how we name the repos and stuff. So I, I'll let's let's ask and then. I mean, the worst case yeah, thing is that the stuff that's currently so in the OpenShift OKD. group. The worst case thing is that the stuff that's in the OpenShift group today stays there, and we just have new stuff in the in the in the OKD COP or OKD community or whatever the heck we're gonna call this. Because the the real problem is that because everything's all jumbled up, it's a little difficult to find what we're looking for. 
Yeah, the the reason I would at strongly advocate for creating totally. a separate space for these is that right now everything under GitHub slash OpenShift is is really the ecosystem of the OpenShift product itself, right? It's the distribution of Kubernetes. It's 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 what OKD is built from. It's what OCP is built from. What we're talking about here with our call it communities of practice, call it communities, you know, whatever we name it, these are the things that we do with OpenShift, right? Or, or it's you know it's our our documentation, our web page for OKD.io. That's the reason I would I would separate them. Yeah. It, but there's also it's confusing because there is some community stuff inside of the OpenShift repo. Um, so I'm I'm wondering if maybe we just create um, a, a GitHub repo that is the OKD cookbook um, and have recipes under it to start with. And as Bruce pointed out, communities of practice is an internal Red Hat thing too. So um, I'm thinking OKD dash cookbook and then just leave it at that. Um, for now, and um, and he just created it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you're good. And let's then let's do that, and then we can make pull requests there, and then that's what we'll link to um, in the um, in the OKD.io. But um, yeah. Yep. I think that'll work. We'll see. Um, but I'll, let's load it by. I don't think anyone's going to get offended by an OKD cookbook, and then then we can publish it as an actual book, um, and we can all make residuals and retire. Um, <laughs> not that anybody who ever created a Python cookbook ever has gotten to reti retire. So um, don't don't bank on that. So cool. All right. Is there are there other things to do um, here? Um, yeah, I think Joseph. Um, yeah, that's I'm kind of leaning towards that. But let's 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 keep chattering on on the on the group mailing list here. Let's get the first one done. Um, if we can get that Tecton one done tomorrow this week and the documentation on on how what the best practice is for linking to it and making a pull request, um, we'll make that we'll start making that happen. Okay. Is there anything else on the agenda that we should do today, or do we get 20 minutes back of our day? Um, else? Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, this is Himanshu here. I just wanted to. So basically, um, from the KNI community team uh, in Red Hat, and uh, so we are trying to uh, find solutions to easily deploy OKD on all, all platforms, but uh, right now I'm focusing on bare metal API. So uh, there are plenty of options, but like we wanted to go with upstream, uh, ideally metal cube, but uh, right now we are pursuing dev scripts since that is much closer to OCP, uh, I mean like OpenShift. And um, so basically there are, so we try to use dev scripts, change some images up uh, to the upstream uh, components and, um, and the rest of it, we had to use the downstream ones since they weren't any available in the OKD group. Uh, so, I mean, we weren't able to deploy it, but we did achieve some success. So right now there is an issue open in OKD, I think, uh, that is tracking the images that are necessary to uh, install it successfully and which might not have their upstream counterparts. So I'm working to uh, with some of the developers and community members to uh, make that possible uh, if, if we can build those up, uh, upstream images. And from what I uh, found so far, it looks like they didn't require that much work because um, uh, they didn't have the, uh, any dependency or like uh, complicated uh, those kind of relations that would require us to do significant work for them. Uh, at, at least some of them seemed like just some uh, using some scripts, and we could simply switch the image from rel to CentOS or any other upstream uh, base image. So uh, I was wondering, like, if anyone is uh, has any experience with something similar, or are they working 
on some of that uh, uh, building upstream images for the uh, downstream ones which are not available yet. Uh, first of all, um, I didn't quite hear, and I apologize because my internet's not great today. Um, are you on um, the Code Ready team? Is I didn't quite hear where where you were based. Where you? Oh, were. I'm I'm part of the KNA community team. Uh, can you hear me? KMA. Um, KNA uh, Kubernetes. Uh, uh, Kubernetes yeah, info. I, I, I'm sorry if you okay. are not am able to hear me. Only... No, I, I, I can I can hear you. I just 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 don't know um, what that community is. I'm sorry, the the abbreviation doesn't ring a bell. Oh uh, yeah, so it's uh, Kubernetes Native Infrastructure. Oh, okay. oh K and I. K and I. K and I. A and I. All right. Sorry. Oh, that's um, what we've been talking about. Yeah. I'm so good. There we go. Yes. Oh, so, so, yeah, so, that, uh... yeah, so oh, it's fine. It's just gaps in the internet making like the words get kind of cut off. It's okay. Yeah, my internet might not be the best of yeah, all. It's not, as not well. you. Yeah, so yeah. basically like um, uh so um Him? Yeah, so basically the idea was uh, to have some uh, ups easy to deploy upstream solutions. So uh, as a first step, DevScripts uh, sounds like a good idea. That's an upstream project. And, and um, uh, since it's able to deploy OpenShift, uh, we thought like it, like with a bit of work, we should be able to use it for OKD as well. Uh, but the major issue we are hitting is the missing upstream images. and uh, uh, which is why like uh, it's failing at the bootstrap as uh, space basically. Um, so right now like we are working towards uh, having a uh, process where like we have available upstream images for the new releases in OKD as well. Uh, particularly cluster API bare metal uh, didn't see, uh, maybe we are just using the uh, OpenShift one. I, I don't know like how we are doing that in OKD, but uh, uh, but many of those had uh, the upstream images available in Metal Cube's repository, image repository. So that uh, so, but like few of them didn't have that, and uh, I thought like if we can build those, and uh, so and another reason for DevScripts using DevScripts was like at least um, so. First of all, I faced issues with the installer. Uh, uh, basically, the um, default installer, which is for OpenShift, doesn't work out well. And when I switched to uh, the OKD installer, like I downloaded it from the GitHub's uh, release and uh, tried to use that, but it complained about some missing plugins. Uh, so I digged around a bit here and there, and uh, finally, like uh, went with uh, building a new ins like uh, installer from the uh, Fedora Core's branch in the OpenShift installer. Uh, which I think uh, OKD uses, and uh, so at least I was able to eliminate that problem. But uh, uh, still, like the installation is not going to 100%. Uh, so um, I've I'm tracking that in a document, and uh, I will see if if there is anything. Uh, maybe I'll drop a mail into the OKD working group regarding the update. Yeah, we actually uh, have an open issue right yeah. now that we're tracking uh, to get those images um, yeah. from the from the RDO team. Um, that mm -hmm. that's that's what you're running into. That's what we're waiting for. Because right now the images that are in there are are just stubs. So so we need the ironic images built from RDO. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna drop it in the chat it's issue 197 197 yeah yeah i i am aware of that issue so okay. but i was just like exploring like if i can make it work just like even if i have to use some downstream images but like i just wanted to see like if i can make it work with dev scripts because i thought like that is a good option to keep in mind because uh, since like okd and openshift are very close 
in the their code and uh, like within their components as well so like with i think with small number of changes like with some parameterizing some of the uh, environment variables and dev scripts like i i think we should be able to make it work with okd as well and if that is possible then we can use dev scripts with for both of the projects instead of a separate repository for okd so that would be and good. yeah because um so that's why like i yeah so that's why like i wanted to make it work like have a successful solution so that i can pitch to the maintainers of dev scripts that hey like i we just need to parameterize these two variables and we are good to go for okd as well so then i can just submit a pr or few prs and uh, that, that that would be a good option to have because working with metal cube uh, to be honest would be a difficult at this point at least because even with vanilla Kubernetes, I had issues, typically, especially in bare metal. Uh, they, they, I mean, like bare metal, more or less has many, many, many separate issues. But anyways, uh, so I thought like first let's work with dev scripts and uh, then we can think on further steps. So I will send out a mail to the uh, OKD working group uh, regarding a, short, a brief update regarding this and where yeah, things are at and. And that sounds too to me like something. And correct me if I'm wrong, Charles, but that would make a great, great recipe as well. Oh, ab yeah, absolutely. Once it's working. Yeah, and and, and yeah. it'll make it so easier I, for that, it'll make it easier for us to maintain bare metal IPI um, if if we don't have to maintain separate pieces of code. Hey, Manchu, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you an yep. email yep. So, with my contact info. Sure. Thanks. And then you can, uh, and forgive me, are you a Red Hatter, an IBMer? Where Where are you landing? You're... Yeah, I am, I'm a Red Hatter. Okay, I thought, I thought I had seen your name someplace before. That's what was... Oh, I, I had, uh, so I, I had, for that. Um, I had dropped a mail, so I guess you might... We remember. talked. No, I mean, like, uh, Pep started the conversation, but, uh, uh, so you might have, yeah, like, following that mail thread, so. That's where I know you from. Yeah, I knew I, I'd heard your name before and, and talk, chatted. Okay, cool. Um, and sorry about the, the internet connection. It's not you, it's me. Um, I'm in a, a, a wonky place today, so uh, my internet's not great. So it took a few minutes with the CNI, not CMA. I'm like going, I, I don't know. Oh, that acronym. Um, so perfect. All right. So that's where we're at today. Is there anyone else hiding on this call with a secret agenda item? Anyone else? All right. Go on. Small thing, Diane. Just that. Uh, okay. Go for uh, it. I've been. Yeah. The uh, we focus on operators, but the uh, the the various. Uh, you know, images and templates are also useful. Uh, and uh, I was playing with some of the, the old uh, temples operator ones that I saved as per Charles' suggestion before I uh, turned off the samples operator. Uh, and uh, they there, there are some that uh, give you the option of using uh, community resources. Uh, I, I was playing with the... Uh, MySQL one. Uh, the, uh, the the only difficulty that I ran into is that, uh, and I don't know how generic this is, but it doesn't give you the option of using a storage class. And uh, you know the the uh, I wasn't able to get it to work with my uh, Rookset, uh, which normally automatically deploys. And uh, you know if at the point that we get uh, the samples up and running again, uh, then it probably wouldn't hurt to go through those and uh, look for annoyances, uh, such as as uh, not being able to use storage classes. Uh, and and uh, I haven't, because I, I was sort of, like I don't need that right away. Uh, and uh, I've got databases to work fine, which is what I'm going into next with my class. Uh, but 
the uh, you know it for for the long run you know the, there's a bit more bulletproofing that uh, in bits and pieces although I, I would be happy just getting the samples operator back which Vadim promised in uh, uh, 4.6 okay All right well we'll we'll see I'll put the samples operator back on the agenda and and, and ping him um, and see if we can do that. I assume with the samples operator, right, it's actually possible for people to customize, to... right? Like it, like we can set up our own samples to be shown in there. Does anyone actually know? That I don't. Well, you, you could always. I mean, you could always add in a, a, a image stream or a template by okay. hand anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so, I, so, so like I've got Wildfly in my catalog because uh, I use that extensively, uh, mm -hmm. and I've dropped in uh, a couple of databases. Yeah. Uh, so, so for me, for me, I'm looking at the idea of we're starting to build uh, essentially templates for how applications should be, the environments that applications should be developed in, along with the databases they'll be linked with, and so uh, I, 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 I was thinking that. Samples operator might be a good way to make sure people can use be on the happy paths very easily. Right, yeah, definitely. So the sample operator back on the agenda for next time and um, I'll ping Christian and, and find out what the status of that is. Anyone else got a hidden agenda item for today? <laughs> All right, you only get back five minutes of your day um, and I put the registration link for the console competition if you um, uh, Bruce because I know you have students and um, they would love hoodies so um, take, a, take a look at that and I will PDF is the um, slide deck that explains it all and, and then put, post the link in that to the working group meeting in 20 minutes after I get another cup of coffee Cool. And I'm very pleased to say my my power did not, not go down. Um, and if you could see the waves that are hitting the shore right now, you'd know that that was a miracle. So um, everybody, wherever you are, stay safe, enjoy, and um, we'll see you on the the working group um, mailing list and or on the um, in Kubernetes and Slack. Um, and so just reach out if you don't hear from somebody who promised you something, which usually is me. Yeah, the slide, you won't be able to see the slides, Bruce, until I get permission from Serena, who built the slides, to share them. So that's going to take me 20 minutes and a cup of coffee and a few bribes. <laughs> I think Serena's a little easier than that. I think she'll be okay with uh, sharing the slides. But the bribes don't hurt. Serena already yeah. sent me a PDF she copy of all of the slides. Yeah, bribes. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah, it, it's out there. So, um... I'll find it and put it on the mailing list. I can. I think I've got. I get a few because it would be wonderful if someone. Who, yeah, so that you've got them. I just have to put them in a um, a place that I can link to. There you go, speaker deck. There we go. Yes, I knew they were there somewhere. But that would be great if we could get you know a number of people from OKD um, working group, and you, maybe your class or whatever doing cool customizations, I don't know, make it look like a TikTok console, who knows, um, we'll, we'll see. All right, folks, we never get it in, in less than an hour, so I just enjoy talking to you all too much, and I talk too much. So um, thank you, we'll see you in two weeks or sooner, and I will also send out um, a couple of notes um, on some of the agenda items, like the the birds of a feather for KubeCon and um, when that's going to happen so people can, if you're going to KubeCon, can sign up for that because I know you have to have registered for KubeCon to get into that. So, um, Alas. KubeCon I don't think is free. No, I KubeCon is very expensive. I know. <laughs> for open source. Yeah, well, I mean, Lynx Foundation makes money that mm -hmm. way. Yeah, well, somebody's got to pay for that platform. Um, somewhere along the way, but anyways, long story. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and two minutes to the end of the hour. All right, there you go. Take care, guys.
Thanks, everybody. See ya. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.